Hey girls, so I'm going to talk about Annabelle's third month. She is uh, 14 weeks and one day, but she is, um, she's a little over three months. She was three months on February 19th. So, um, I have my calendar over here. I have one of these for each of the kids um, for their first year of life. And basically what it is, is you just um, notate things that go on. Um, you know, milestones and things like that. You write a little summary of the month, um, their height and weight at the end of that month, and then um, other things that, like it comes with little stickers, just like that pregnancy calendar that I had, and you just put them on the date. So um, there are little stickers for milestones and things like that. So, um, so she's three months old. Uh, her sleeping patterns are, um, she goes down at night around 8.30, and then she normally wakes up, the, like, I'm just going to talk about her normal schedule because, of course, there are, like, growth spurts and cluster feedings and things like that that, you know, throw this out the window. But for the most part, um, this is what is going on. So down at 830, um, she gets up at 2, and then she'll nurse for, like, 10 minutes, um, and then she'll get up at 5. And nurse for 10 minutes and then she'll get up at 7 and nurse for 10 minutes and then she'll get up at 9 um, and at that point we just kind of get up for the day so she's in her crib for about 12 hours um, if you because 8 30 to 9 is a little over 12 but then the 10 minute three times she's up for 10 minutes to eat um, and then during the day she'll take about half hour naps. She doesn't nap very long at all. Um, her first nap of the day is in the swing um, because Connor is still awake and I don't, I can't get away from him to go up in her room and like do a routine and stuff and put her down. Um, once she gets better at that routine, we'll integrate it. But once Connor goes down for his nap at noon, the next time she's tired, I take her up and we do the same shortened version of her bedtime routine. So she doesn't get a bath, but she'll get, um, like I'll swallow her, nurse her, rock her, and put her down. And she'll actually sleep in her room. Sometimes when she's in her room, it'll even be for like an hour. The longest she's napped in her room is two hours. So most of her other naps throughout the day are just after I nurse her, she'll fall asleep and um, she'll sleep until I have to get up. So I try to like hold her until Connor needs something. Um, so sometimes I'll get like a half hour uh, with her napping that way. And then feeding is on demand still. I would say it averages every two hours that she's eating, uh, sometimes three. It just depends on how tired she is when she nurses. If she only takes like a half feeding and falls asleep, um, then she'll want to nurse sooner. If I can get her to eat while she's really awake, then um, it'll space out a little bit longer. So um, some things that she's doing, she she's grasping objects. Like we have a little bouncy seat that has the little rings that hang down and you can pull them and they play music and stuff. She can get those down. Um, it takes her a little while. She just doesn't reach up and grab it. She kind of bats around on it until she can grab it. So she's not like perfected grasping objects. She'll pull on my necklace when I'm nursing her and things like that. And she's starting to pull my hair, so that's fun. <laughs> she's blowing raspberries, and that is so darn cute. And um, she also, she smiles, of course, and she giggles now, too. But you have to work so darn hard for her to giggle. Um, the other day, I was trying to make her laugh, and, like, I got out of breath, like, making silly noises to try to make her laugh. But I got her, too. But she, she makes you work hard right now. Some of her favorite things are she likes being naked. And um, I posted this, I think, in our, um, somewhere on Facebook. With Connor, he would not be happy if he took his clothes off. With Annabelle, when she starts to get fussy, what I do is take her clothes off, and then she settles down. Um, so that that's interesting to me. But um, she can go from being, like, the crabbiest baby. You undress her with her diaper on, so she's not completely naked. But undress her and she'll just smile and she'll um, blow raspberries at you and it settles her down. So I guess that's something to try. Um, 
and her favorite toy is Sophie the giraffe. Um, that little squeaking giraffe, she just loves that. And I have some pictures I'll put in of her with the giraffe. Um, and then she rolls over from her back to her belly. Um, she does it all the time, but she doesn't like doing it. I think it's an accident. She like, she'll go from her back to her side by kicking her legs and then she'll just roll over to her belly. But when she gets on her belly, she can't get back. So she gets kind of mad. Um, so she, you know, she rolls over and cries, rolls over and cries, rolls over and cries. Um, so that is too bad, but she'll, she'll get the hang of that. She doesn't, she can't roll over from her belly to her back yet though. She can sit in the bum bone out. Um, I, I don't leave her in there for like over 10 minutes, but she does like to sit in it. She likes looking around. Um, and she, I don't know, um, with my son, he didn't pass his hearing test until he was a year old. And, um, I can just tell she hears so much better than him. It's really, um, surprising. Like any noise in the house, TV, one of Connor's toys, my husband or I, Connor, if it's like more on the quiet side and then she hears something like that, she turns her head and immediately looks at it. Um, Connor didn't know that there was a TV until he was about two. Like it would be on and he wouldn't, he wouldn't look at it. He completely ignored it. And now like seeing how Annabelle reacts versus him, either she's just really inquisitive or he couldn't hear the TV. Um, and he is slightly speech delayed. So I'm really, now that I've seen the difference in the babies, it could just be a difference in person. Or it could be that he just couldn't hear when he was little. I mean, I guess I should know that since he didn't pass his hearing test, but he would respond to some noises. So I, I knew he was hearing, but I guess I just don't know what he was hearing. So that's been interesting. Okay, so back to Annabelle. If she doesn't have a diaper on and she doesn't have any clothes on, she her last weigh-in was on the February 21st, and she weighed 12 pounds, 8 ounces. Um... She was 24 and a half inches long, and her head circumference was 15 and a quarter. So, um, from her two month appointment to her three month appointment, she gained one pound and four ounces. So, that's good. She's in the 75th and 74th percentile for height and weight. Um, and then I think around 25th for her head, my babies have small heads. So, then we, we delayed vaccines um, altogether until she was three months old. Um, and we're selectively vaccinating, um, kind of. Maybe delayed vaccinations are more appropriate. I want her to be fully vaccinated, um, with the exception of three vaccines. But um, we're, we're really spacing them out differently. Um, I did a lot of research on what I felt comfortable with. So um, I think it's a really individual decision, and I don't want to talk about it or like too much or um, feel like I'm telling anybody what to do. For her three-month appointment, she got the DTaP vaccine and um, so that's diphtheria, tetanus, and pertussis. And then um, she got the Rotac vaccine, which is for rotavirus. And I really wasn't going to get that vaccine um, because it's somewhat controversial. It's not really, except for an in infancy and like the whole grand scheme of things, it's not like typically life-threatening, although it can be in younger babies. So I was just like, it's just one of those things that she'll get and then it'll be fine. Well, um, my my nephew, who's six weeks older than Annabelle, he got rotavirus and he was in the hospital and he, um, I guess, started like choking on his vomit and he like turned blue and wound up in hospital. And um, yeah, so after we saw that little ordeal, I kind of got over the controversialness of um, the rotavirus vaccine and decided to get it. So that's what I'm saying, like, in your families and your situations, things may be different um, where you would consider other vaccines. The ones that we are um, really delaying for quite a while are the um, chickenpox vaccine and hep A. Those will come later. Um, and hep B, I'm under, she's going to get it. I'm just undecided right now as to when. 
Um, but all the other ones, like next month, she'll have the Hib vaccine and the pneumococcal um, RPC vaccine. Um, and it will kind of alternate months until she gets all the doses that she's supposed to have for those. Um, and then polio will come a little bit later um, as well. So that's kind of what we're doing for vaccines. Um, I don't really feel comfortable answering questions about why I decided to do what I did because like I said, I think it's a very individual um, decision. Connor, we delayed things, um, but we did more than we probably should have. In my opinion, um, our, our doctor's office does nine vaccines at the two month visit. That's, and that's actually the standard um, practice through the American Academy of Pediatrics, or however, APA, or I'm not sure what word are those words going, but you know what I mean. And no, it's not nine shots. It's um, typically, I think, three needles and an oral. Um, so people say, oh, it was only three shots. Well, no. Um, there's a shot called um, Pentacil, and it has um, the DTaP vaccine. So it has diphtheria, te tetanus, and pertussis. It also has, um, okay, I just looked it up. I just wanted to double check. Um, it is DTaP, so diphtheria, tetanus, pertussis, so that's three. Um, and then it is um, Hib, that's four and polio five and then in addition to that you get your pneumococcal which is another needle so six and um hep b is seven and rotavirus mm -hmm. is eight okay so it's eight vaccines at once um no it's not eight needles but it's eight diseases that are being vaccinated against and i just I'm just not comfortable with um, introducing that many things into a baby system at once. Connor got them all at once, and um, he got the fever, got the fussiness, got the I'm going to sleep all day and be dead to the world, because that is a lot for your body to fight at once. And um, Annabelle, she just got the rotavirus and DTaP, which is still four. Um, things that her body was fighting, but she got a little warm, not a fever. She was not fussy. She, it didn't change her sleep pattern throughout the day. So again, it could be a difference in children, um, or it could be that it was just easier on her body than um, having them all at once. But to each his own, and no one should be judged either way. So um, I think that's it for what's going on. She's teething, so that's something we're kind of dealing with. No teeth yet, though. Um, and I think I'll make a video on this, but our favorite thing to do is to make little ice cubes of milk, breast milk, and put it in a mesh feeder and let her chew on that, and that settles her down with teething more than anything else that we found. So um, I can do a video on that if you want. Oh, and I am back to work now. So um, I work one night a week, I'm gone from the house about 14 hours. My first night back, she took um, only four ounces the whole time I was gone. My second night back, she took eight ounces, um, and I've only worked two nights so far. So um, she kind of reverse cycles when I get home, so I'm, mm -hmm. I'm fine with that. Um, so it is what it is. I wish I didn't have to work out of the home and be away from her. Um, but she'll be getting solids in two months, so I only have to work... Um, eight more shifts before she can have solids when I'm gone. So um, I think that will make things easier. I hope it will. Um, but I think that's it. Um, Annabelle's napping, so I'll throw some pictures in here of this past month for you. Um, and I will see you ladies soon. Bye, girls.